Hi, and welcome to the DE Physical Education Flip Learning videos. The Hormonal Control Mechanism Hormones can also have an effect on the heart rate. The release of adrenaline during exercise is known as hormonal control. Adrenaline's effect on the heart. Adrenaline is a stress hormone that is released by the sympathetic nerve and cardiac nerve during exercise. It stimulates the SA node, which results in an increase in both speed and force of the contraction, therefore increasing cardiac output. This results in more blood being pumped to the working muscles so they can receive more oxygen for the energy they need. The adrenaline stimulates the SA node, which in result increases the speed of both the force and the contraction. Key terms you should know. Adrenaline. A stress hormone that is released by the sympathetic nerves and cardiac nerve during exercise, which causes an increase in heart rate. Ejection fraction. The percentage of blood pumped out by the left ventricle per beat. Stroke volume. Stroke volume is the volume of blood pumped out by the heart ventricles in each contraction. On average, the resting stroke volume is approximately 70 milliliters. Stroke volume depends on the following. The elasticity of the cardiac fibers and the venous return. The venous return is the volume of blood returning to the heart via the veins. If the venous return increases, then the stroke volume will also increase. If more blood enters the heart, then more blood goes out. The elasticity of the cardiac fiber, this is concerned with the degree of the stretch of the cardiac tissue during the distal phase of the cardiac cycle. The more the cardiac fibers can stretch, the greater the force of contraction will be. A greater force of contraction can increase the injection fraction. This is called Startling's Law. Key terms you should know. Stroke volume. The volume of blood pumped out by the heart ventricles in each contraction. Distal phase. When the heart relaxes to fill with blood. Ejection fraction. The percentage of blood pumped out by the left ventricle per beat. Starling's law. The increase in the venous return causes a greater distalic filling of the heart. The cardiac muscle is stretched. More force of contraction. Increasing the ejection fraction. The ejection fraction. The ejection fraction can be represented in two ways. The amount of blood pumped out of the ventricle divided by the total amount of blood in the ventricle. This will give you the ejection fraction as a percentage. The other way is the stroke volume divided by the end of diastolic volume, the volume of blood in the ventricles at rest. This will give you your ejection fraction. The contrasticity of the cardiac tissue, myochondrium. The greater the contracticity of the cardiac tissue, the greater the force of the contraction. This results in an increase in stroke volume. It is also highlighted by an increase in injection fraction. An average volume is 60%, but it can be increased to about 85% following a period of training. Heart rate and cardiac output. This is the number of times the heart beats per minute. On average, the resting heart rate is approximately 72 beats per minute. Cardiac output. Cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped out by the heart ventricles per minute. It is equal to stroke volume multiplied by the heart rate. So, cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. Key terms you should know. Cardiac output. The volume of the blood pumped out by the heart ventricles per minute. Heart rate range in response to exercise. Heart rate range increases with exercise, but how much it increases is dependent on the intensity of the exercise. Heart rate will increase in direct proportion to the exercise intensity. Higher the intensity, higher the heart rate, until the heart reaches its maximum. How to work out maximum heart rate. 220, which is the maximum a heart can beat when we are born, divided by the athlete's age, equals the max heart rate. Athletes and their heart rate. A trained performer has a greater heart rate range because their resting heart rate is lower. The range between their resting and their maximum heart rate is larger than the average person. For example, Bradley Wiggins. His resting heart rate is 35 beats per minute. His maximum heart rate is 182 because he is 38 years old. So 220 minus 38 equals 182. 
and his heart rate range will be 35 beats per minute all the way up to 182 beats per minute. What happens during exercise? The following graphs illustrate what happens to the heart during maximal exercise, such as sprinting and sub-maximal exercise, such as jogging. As you can see, there is an anticipated rise due to the hormonal action of adrenaline, which causes the SA node to increase the heart rate. There is a sharp rise in heart rate due to the mainly anaerobic work. The heart rate continues to rise due to maximum workloads stressing the anaerobic system. There is then a rapid decline in the heart rate as soon as the exercise stops. The slower recovery of the body system is returned to resting levels. Heart rate needs to remain elevated to rid the body of waste products, for example, lactic acid. The same process then happens with our sub-maximum heart rate. So if the athlete is jogging, you can see that it goes from A, there's then a sharp rise of the heart rate due to the anaerobic work, then plateaus as the athlete meets the demand for the oxygen supply, there's a rapid decline, and there's a slower recovery as the system reduces the lactic acid buildup. Regular aerobic training will result in more cardiac muscle. When cardiac muscle becomes bigger and stronger, this is known as cardiac hypertrophy. This will have an important effect on the stroke volume, heart rate, and therefore cardiac output. The end diastolic volume of the ventricle increases. If the ventricles can contract with more force and thus push out more blood, the heart does not have to beat as often, so the resting heart rate will decrease. In layman's terms, a bigger, stronger heart will enable more blood to be pumped out per beat, increasing the stroke volume. This can result in the resting heart rate dropping below 72 beats per minute, which is the average for an untrained individual. This is known as bradycardia, and when this occurs, oxygen delivered to the muscles improves as there is less oxygen needed for the contractions of the heart. Key terms you should know. Cardiac hypertrophy. The thickening of the muscular walls of the heart so it becomes bigger and stronger also can mean a larger ventricular cavity. Bradycardia. A decrease in the resting heart rate to below 60 beats per minute. Cardiac output in response to exercise. During exercise, there is a large increase in cardiac output due to an increase in the heart rate and increase in stroke volume. Cardiac output due to an increase in the heart rate and an increase in the stroke volume. And cardiac output will increase as the intensity of exercise increases until maximum intensity is reached and then it plateaus. As you can see from the graph here, the cardiac output will increase as the intensity of the exercise increases until it reaches its maximum, around 24 in this case, and it plateaus and evens out. The table below shows the differences in a cardiac output in a trained and an untrained individual both at rest and during exercise. The example athletes are aged 18. During exercise, an untrained person, their stroke volume is 120 milliliters, their heart rate is 202, and this gives a cardiac output of 24.24. During exercise, a trained person, 170 milliliters stroke volume times by their heart rate 202 will give a cardiac output of around 34.34 liters. At rest, an untrained person will be 70 milliliters times 72 equals 5.04. Compared to an at-rest trained person, they'll have a stroke volume of 84, but their beats per minute are 60, giving them the same 5.04 cardiac output. Stroke volume in response to exercise. Stroke volume increases as exercise intensity increases. However, this is only the case up to 40 to 60% of maximum effort. Once a performer reaches this point, stroke volume plateaus. This is because the increase in heart rate near maximum effort results in a shorter diastolic phase. In layman's terms, the ventricles don't have as much time to fill up with blood before having to pump out again. The stroke volume is represented here in this graph. The stroke volume increases until it plateaus. When there's increase in heart rate near the maximum effort, the results are shorter diastolic phase. So as the diastolic phase happens, you can see the stroke volume decreases as the intensity increases.